Hello, this is Git Jesse, and I'm here with my StarCraft 2 Protoss unit guide. Previously, I already completed the Terran unit guide and the Zerg unit guide, so go check those out on my channel if you want to see that. So, let's get started. Okay, the first basic unit of the Protoss is the Probe, of course. It's a basic worker unit. It's a light mechanical ground unit. It can gather resources, build structures, it has a normal damage attack that can only attack ground units. Uh, next up are the Protoss units that come out of the gateway, starting with the Zealot. The Zealot is the Protoss's basic bread and butter unit. It's a light biological ground unit. It can only attack ground units and it does normal damage to ground units. Something special about the Zealot is that whenever it's chasing an enemy or running towards a stationary enemy it has a special ability that allows it to close the distance really quickly yeah, so you can see it right there and it uh, it's a auto cast ability so you don't have to tell them to do it and uh, basically that's useful for chasing enemies and getting close to siege tanks and things like that so that's the Zealot. Next up for the gateway units is the Sentry. It's a light mechanical psionic unit. Uh, it's our, it has ranged attacks that can attack both ground and air units and it does normal damage to all units. Uh, the Sentry is a caster unit. It has a few special abilities. Its first special ability is called the Force Field and what this does is it creates a force field that no units can pass through so a, a useful application for this would be like if there are a bunch of zerglings coming and the sentries wanted to survive the encounter without the zerglings killing them they could back up against this cliff here and then create a bunch of uh, a bunch of force fields around them so that the zerglings can't surround them and then the sentries can use their ranged attack to attack and kill the zerglings. See, they have a pretty far, uh, far range for their ranged attack. Uh, next up is the Guardian Shield ability, which looks like that. It's basically an aura that reduces the enemy's range damage for all friendly units within the aura. So that's useful if you're fighting marines or other sentries or hydralists or any ground range unit or range air units. Uh, then the last ability for the sentry is the hallucination ability. And when you click on that, it gives you a menu to, to allow you to select which units you want to hallucinate. So if I if I click on probes, it'll summon some hallucinated probes. Uh, and they can't deal damage to enemy units and they take extra damage, but they're useful for, you know, kind of creating the illusion to the enemy that your army is bigger than it really is. So if I wanted to, I could create an army of zealots, hallucinated zealots, and this army of hallucinated zealots would be a really good meat shield for my army if I had a primarily ranged army. So anyway, that's that's the all the special abilities of the sentry. Uh, next up is the stalker. The stalker is an armored mechanical ground unit. It has a ranged attack that can attack both ground and air units, and it does extra damage versus armored units. Uh, the Stalker has a special blink ability that allows it to go up and down cliffs if it has vision of the cliff. And it's also good for chasing enemies and running away from enemies quickly. So if you're into micro, the Stalker is your unit. Uh, next up out of the Protoss Gateway is the High Templar. High Templar is a light biological psionic unit. It's a caster unit. It cannot attack. Its first ability is the feedback ability, which does 
which uh, which drains energy from an enemy unit and deals damage based on how much energy that unit has remaining. So this sentry here it has about 150 energy. So if I use feedback on it, well, I can't target my own units, but if I did use feedback on it, it would kill the sentry since it has uh, combined with shields, it has 80 health. The next ability for the High Templar is the uh, Psionic Storm ability. And that's basically an area of effect skill that's good at killing lots of low HP units like probes. So that's what it looks like. And last for the High Templar is the Combine into an Archon ability. And whenever that finishes, it creates an Archon. Which brings me to the next Protoss ground unit, which is the Archon. It's a psionic ground unit. It can attack both ground and air units. And it does extra damage versus biological units. So since it's High Templar as a biological unit, it'll kill it pretty fast. Two shots. So nothing much to say about the Archon, it's just basically a big beefy unit that's uh, multi-purpose. And since it does extra damage versus biological units, it'd be good against Terran infantry or, or basically any Zerg unit. Uh, the last Protoss gateway unit is the Dark Templar. The Dark Templar is a permanently cloaked unit. It doesn't require energy to stay cloaked, it's just always cloaked. Uh, it's a light biological psionic ground unit. It can only attack other ground units. And it, uh, it has a warp blade attack that does massive damage. And for the worker units, that means it'll pretty much one-shot them. So if a Dark Templar gets into an enemy worker line and they don't have cloak detection, they can do a ton of damage to their resources. So that's all the Protoss Gateway units. Now we'll move on to the units that come out of the robotics facility. First up is the Observer. Like the Dark Templar, the Observer is permanently cloaked. It's also a detector unit. It's a light mechanical air unit and it has no attack. The main purpose of the Observer is basically to be an intelligence unit. You can easily keep, your, keep an eye on the enemy with this unit and you can uh, have it hang around your army to be, act as a cloaked detector. Okay, next up is the Immortal from the Robotics Facility. The Immortal is the Protoss's tank unit, pretty much. Uh, it's got a bunch of hit points. It's an armored mechanical ground unit that can only attack other ground units, and it does lots of extra damage to other armored units. The special thing about the Immortal is that it has a special uh, it's called a hardened shield and basically whenever an enemy attack does a huge amount of damage to the shield like for example a deployed siege tank it'll reduce that attack to only 10 damage to the shield so immortals would be good against things like siege tanks next up out of the robotics facility is the warp prism the Warp Prism is the Protoss's dropship, basically. And the other special unique thing about the Warp Prism is that it can also deploy into, I guess you could call it pylon mode. And basically what this does is it creates a, a, a power ring like pylons do. And you can use that to power buildings and warp in units from the warp gate. And the Warp Prism is an armored mechanical psionic air unit. And it does not have any attack. 